Are you considering purchasing a Supra? Well, in this video, here are some things that you should consider before buying one. Not only from one Supra owner, Japan, but two Supra owners. <laughs> hey, what's up everybody? My name's Vin and I'm the owner of this 2020 Nocturnal Black Supra. I've owned it for about a year and a half. Hey guys, my name is Jimmy. I'm the owner of this Nitro Yellow 2022 Toyota Supra, and I've owned it for only two months. And in today's video, we're gonna go ahead and talk about some things that you should know about the Supra before you consider purchasing it. First off, the good stuff. It's a Supra. Now, some people are gonna argue whether it's a Supra or not, but this car attracts a lot of attention, good and bad, but there are people that always compliment this car, and if you're looking to stand out, this is the car for you. Should we pop the hood? Pop the hood. <laughs> I think the biggest thing about the Supra, the most positive thing is the engine in the Supra. It is the B58 and a lot of people are probably gonna say it should have came with a 2JZ, but in today's world, the B58 is the best inline six motor out there. I don't care what anybody says, it is so reliable. Doing maintenance on this car is super, super easy. There's a lot of aftermarket parts for it and everything, so I'm, I'm very happy with the way it sounds. The reliability is insane. I mean, I only had it for eight months, but you've had it for two years. No problems, right? And your M4, you had crazy problems. Oh, so before this, and I'm gonna talk about what Jimmy said, before I owned the Supra, I actually owned the F82 M4, the S55, and it sounded like dog shit. The B58 sounds way better and uh, you have crank cub issues on the S55. But way before, in my young days, we're talking about many, many years ago, I owned the N55 335i and I took that thing into the shop every two to three months and spent grands just to get it running again. And after a year and a half and modifications, I have not had a single issue. I've just been enjoying the car. <laughs> Uh, another thing about this car, uh, in terms of performance, it's very aftermarket friendly, and with just a few bolt-ons, a downpipe and a tune, and you're talking probably about, you know, no more than $700, you can push a lot of power in this car reliably. Right now, I have a Cadet downpipe, uh, HKS intake, RK titanium exhaust, but I'm pushing somewhere close to 440 wheel horsepower and over 500 foot pounds of torque. So this is the 2020 model and this is the 2022 model. These were underpowered. So I think they were right around 330 yeah, yeah, horsepower. Yeah. And then this is 380. The torque numbers again, we'll put on the screen. Probably should have done our research. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't tune mine because mine's locked. Instead, I dressed up my engine to make it look faster. <laughs> Before we got to the spot that we were at today, Jimmy actually sat inside of my car. He drove my car here. I drove his car there. And it's insane. It's so good. It's so good. While we're on the topic of performance and maintenance on the car, oil changes have never been easier on this car. I mean, I do all my own oil changes. Jimmy has done his own too. Um, what else were we gonna talk about? The bolt-ons and everything, oh, all the And modifications yeah. on this car and tuning, it is so simple. I'm not a very mechanic savvy person, but I've done all the modifications on my car and it's super, super easy. If you guys are interested in seeing any of those videos, go ahead and look at my channel and watch all those videos. I did it myself and I can't believe I did it. And it's running really, really good. <laughs> <laughs> at the price point that it's at, this is probably one of the best sports cars that you can get at that price point. Before the pandemic and before the car market crisis, a lot of people were able to get this car well below MSRP and maybe one day it'll get there again. But I know some people that got it at 40, 5,000, 48,000, even at 57, I gotta say, this is probably one of the best cars I've ever owned and I've owned a couple sports cars before. I absolutely agree with Vin. When I was shopping for the car about early June, everybody was charging over MSRP. I got it for 59 and that's MSRP. I was happy with it. And this car is a lot of fun, even if you don't tune it or not. Even at stock power, it's a little bit of handle if you're a new driver. If you guys keep up with automotive motorsports at all, and you know who Larry Chen or Hannah is? And Hannah tracked a Super for a while. If you guys actually looked at her car, she was stock. She was running stock power. I think it was yeah. just suspension. She did amazing. But she has a GL Yaris, right? She's racing a GL Yaris in Japan for a team out there. It's insane. Good luck out there. <laughs> but it's a BMW. <laughs> hey, BMWs perform really well. I love BMW. I embrace it more than 
more than anything. <laughs> I bought a BMW sweater and you have a sweater on right now. <laughs> While we're talking about money, the insurance on these cars is actually pretty cheap. I owned a M4 before this and I was paying a lot of money for insurance. I'm just gonna go ahead and let you guys know, on a six month premium, I was paying 1400 every six months for my M4. And on my Supra, I'm paying half of that. I modified my M4, it was basically full bolt-on, and now I've modified my Supra full bolt-on, and that car, is, the Supra is way faster than the M4. Absolutely faster, and I'm paying half the amount of money for insurance on it. Keep in mind, we're in Washington, I live in King County, and we have some of the most expensive insurance rates in the, in the United States. Because when I was living in Chicago, my insurance was half of what it was now. I would be paying half. When I first moved to Seattle, and I, was ha I owned a WRX at the time, I was paying $600 every six months. When I moved here, it jumped up, almost double. Yep. If you don't live in Washington, good for you. You're, you have better insurance rates for sure. So if you're considering, you know. Speaking of Washington, <laughs> gas. Gas. So. I've owned a couple sports cars before and the Supra's probably been the best car and got the best gas mileage out of it. Hands it's my, down. It's my fastest car and I'm getting really good gas mileage. I think right now I'm averaging anywhere between 22 to 24 miles per gallon and I drive my car pretty hard. Safely, but pretty hard. I drive a lot because I already have like almost 5,000 miles. After two months <laughs> of ownership. <laughs> And if I really, really grandma pedal it, I can get like 35 miles per gallon. And that's pretty crazy. Enough raving about the Supra. We said so many good things and I still think it's a really great car. Here are some negative things that you should consider before purchasing a Supra. Although the car looks really, really nice outside, there are a lot of fake vents on the Supra. There's fake vents on the hood, on the bumper, on the side. And there's fake vents in the back too. But everybody knows that. Everybody knows that. So is, you know, fake vents, is it a fake Supra? No, it's not a <laughs> fake Supra. I got this one done, but it does nothing. Yeah. Like, if anything, you have to cut out this part to lessen the wheel pressure. This vent actually does something right here, which is the brake duct. Mm -hmm. And now I'm just gonna name off some things that I really disliked about the car. Initially, the wind buffeting inside the car. So when you actually, if you buy the car and you're driving in the car and you have the windows rolled down, there is so much wind noise. There's a cheap solution like me, uh, which is this $10 Amazon <laughs> deal. It's actually a door guard for your car. I just sticked it in there and then now my wind buffeting issue is fixed. But there is the nice option, the carbon fiber AMS. And there's other companies out there, but I think this is probably one of the best looking ones and to fix the issue as well. Yep, get over it, folks. <laughs> you have $10, you bought a $50,000 car, you can't have $10 here. <laughs> I read a lot of reviews, and the number one thing they picked about was the steering wheel. Kind of like the Rex V1, I got to customize it. For a sports car, and how much performance and how much money you're paying for it, you'd think that you'd get a more... Beefier. Yeah, beefier, performance-oriented steering wheel, but I felt like I was driving in some type of Camry. Jimmy upgraded his steering wheel. The stock steering was so small, I ended up just getting an even smaller <laughs> steering wheel. I got the KMP quick release steering wheel, but beforehand I did have also another carbon fiber steering wheel that was a little bit beefier, but now that I'm not dealing in the car anymore, I went full race car and I got a quick release. Because race car. Hold on, one thing which was really weird about my color is it attracts a lot of bugs. Black. Although look, it looks really, really good. Black is a very difficult color to maintain, but once you actually wash it for a couple of days, it honestly is probably the best color. While we're talking about paint, the paint on these cars is very, very soft. So what I would highly recommend is you get your car touched, uh, buffed and polished, uh, paint corrected if you needed to, and then you PPF the car immediately. Unfortunately, I didn't PPF my car. <laughs> I got a lot of rock chips. Oh my I car. Did. I did. Thank shout out to California Tin of Everett. All right, we're inside of the car, and here are a couple things that you should consider. First off, the horn on this car probably came from a Camry or something. Honk the horn, Jimmy. <laughs> no, what is that? Why? That horn. Why Toyota? That horn has got to go. For me, 
I don't have a horn anymore. <laughs> the sound system inside the Supra. The sound system isn't the best. I just gotta let you guys know out there. So if you like bumping jams, it's, it's not good. I don't know about any other aftermarket sound system solution, uh, but I'm sure there's one out there. If you guys like playing music a lot, you should highly consider upgrading your sound system. Things rattle here and there everywhere. Yeah, you are you do hear a little bit of rattle noises. There is a fix for the rattle noises. A couple of my friends did it. I have not done it yet, but pretty much there's a solution for that, but the car does rattle a little bit. With active sound design on, the car actually plays artificial engine noise to help enhance some of the sound and make it sound better. Me personally, I think the car sounds better how it is. You can actually turn off active sound design using Beamer code and actually hear the real noises that the engine makes. Another thing too that you can you can code out, uh, the car has auto on and auto off. I know it saves gas, so they say, but I honestly hate it. Through Beamer code, you can also turn off that function. Also with Beamer code, you can turn on the function where your car sport starts in sport mode, and that's a really big deal. Sport mode all the time. Uh, the car is honestly very, very small, and it sits really low to the ground stock, so it does take some effort getting in and out of the car. I've lowered my car, so now it's even harder to do that. So I'm about 5'9", and I sit in the car pretty comfortably. I would say anybody that's six foot or taller should probably consider or even go for a test drive before they decide to purchase the car. It's very low, it's very small. I know there's, I, I know people that own Supros that are over six foot and they say they can deal with it, but I think if I was that tall, unfortunately I'm not, I would probably reconsider and buy a different car. There's a guy with a Supra out there with a channel that's seven feet tall. <laughs> seven foot tall, I don't know how he does it, but one thing to consider, being able to see your blind spot is very difficult in the car. It comes with auto detect, uh, auto blind spot detection. If you're, if you're like me, I always like to double check and it's really, really tough to see. I actually got wide angle mirrors. So now I can see an extra lane over. So that helps with the blind spot. But when you're trying to look back, you see, I can't even see through that little mirror back there to check my blind spot. In order to open your trunk, you have to literally touch it. And on my black car, I always leave fingerprints on the car. <laughs> so when you lift it up, there's no trunk button or trunk handle for you to lift it up. Yeah. But this is what Jimmy's fit inside his car. <laughs> well, I have a fridge in here that, you know, you use a freezer, you put ice cream in there. Jimmy door dashes and he <laughs> delivers ice cream. And this is my trunk space. Pretty simple, very spacious. I was able to put this compartment thing in there, uh, but a lot of room if you're not, if you're only traveling for one or two people, this is absolutely okay. But you see what I mean? Do it. Fingerprints. Oh yeah, they're there. You see that? I always have to deal with that, having a black car. Yeah. So all in all, I absolutely love owning the Supra, minus all the haters. Again, owning this car, it's, it's a very controversial car. The haters are only on the internet. It's only on the internet. Everybody yeah. that I've met in person or whenever I pull into a meet or an event, everybody loves the Supra. But for some reason, the internet trolls just love trolling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But I do love owning the car, Jimmy. How about you? I love this damn car so much. Um, the cruises I've gone through with the GR Super guys, amazing. We have our own little uh, group now called PNW GR, which you guys can follow on Instagram and, and Facebook. Facebook. Subscribe to this channel. We are obviously modifying our cars. We plan on tracking our cars and we'll, we'll be able to provide a lot more insight on the Supra and the B58 engine that comes with it. Uh, but overall, if you are thinking about buying a Supra, buy, buy, buy! Hopefully you guys found a lot of the points that we talked about very helpful. Peace out, guys. Bye, guys. <laughs> Ooh. Damn, that's a nice car. That's a nice car. We about to go drive, take some pictures. <laughs>